COVID-19 cases in Nigeria increased beyond the 10,000 mark with 307 new cases reported on Sunday. This is in spite of intensified efforts by authorities to flatten the curve of the pandemic. The new cases announced by the Nigeria Center for Disease Control and CDC takes infections in Africa's most populous nation to 10,162, out of which 3,007 discharge and 287 deaths were also recorded. The NCDC data showed that the cases were spread across 14 states and the FCT, with Lagos accounting for the highest number of infections for the day, with 188 cases. Joining us live now is Dr. Pascal Ugochuku, resident doctor, Department of Surgery, Enugu State University Teaching Hospital. Thank you very much for joining us on the news. Thank you so much for this platform. Uh, some cherry news. 82-year-old hypertensive widow um, is said to have recovered from COVID-19 in Oshu. But we need to get an understanding. She is, uh, from all indication, a high-risk sort of uh, patient. What sort of treatment could have you know, made the difference for her? Um, okay, well, let me let me start by saying that when a patient is termed high risk, that is not a death sentence. And um, it, she was termed high risk because it's been observed over time that, that um, patients with such com comorbidities as she had, had a higher chance of, of not um, being able to fight off the virus even with treatment. So, but that doesn't make it a, a 100%. So, um, I don't think any 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 special treatment was given apart from the standard procedure and um, the the WHO and NCDC recommended guidelines for treatment of COVID-19 patients, and and she happens to be one of one of those those few that uh, successfully uh, recovered from the virus. We thank God for that, but that is not to say that that every patient with such comorbidities. Is, is going to be able to fight it off. And that is also to say that we shouldn't um, give up on patients with such um, comorbidities and still do our best to try to um, treat as appropriate. Uh, quickly, I want to take your thoughts on the disparity between the figures that's been given. We have 10,000 cases and we have just about 3,000 people that have recovered uh, from the virus and more deaths. Is it possible that something is not being done right with those that are recovering fast enough to increase the number? Because if we have 10,000 and then we have 3,000 recovered, some persons say it's not actually good news. What do you say? Um, well, for you to say that someone has recovered from, from the virus, you must have done you must have repeated the tests um, twice at a specific interval, and um, and um, well, the the figures are there. Um, I I wouldn't be able to say if we should trust the figures or not because there are lots of facts to be checked. There there are lots of book bookkeeping that are that that um, that's gone before such figures are published. So. Um, it's it's possible to have to have had more people that may have recovered from the virus and yet adequate testing has not been been done for them yet so you can't actually say that they've recovered until you've you fulfilled all all criteria for all right. recovery as stated in the guidelines so um i wouldn't uh, okay, um, uh, uh, let, let, let's, let's, let's move the conversation a little further and look at the situation with the test kits. The NCDC boss um, said that there is a black market now. How did this come about, considering the fact that this is a highly specialized um, uh, product and the fact that our borders are allegedly closed at this time with the restriction um, on travel movement? Well, the... Black market exists when there is more demand than supply for a product, and then people find ways of, of smuggling both, both fake and then poly, um, poly manufactured products. Well, but NCDC has, has reiterated that only the tests done with PCR by PCR testing can be relied upon. So most of the rapid test kits 
that flood the markets have have been proven to have a, a, a high false positive and false negative um, outcome. So such anyone patronizing those uh, rapid test kits from the black market is putting his life and the life of every other um, patriotic Nigerian at risk. I wouldn't advise anyone to, to go on doing, doing that. But, but then, when the demand for testing is um, higher than what the government is supplying, that gives room for um, the development and growth of the black market. So how can we uh, manage this so it doesn't become something that we worry about subsequently? If people are getting access to these tests and it is not reliable, um, what worries you about that development? Um, it's, it's, it's worrisome because a, a lot of people would believe they have the virus after testing when they don't actually have it, and a lot of people that have it and should seek proper medical attention wouldn't because the test kits would tell them that they don't have the virus. And um, you know, I, would, I would recommend that the government does uh, do a lot of campaign about it, let the public know, let them be sensitized that such test kits cannot, are not reliable. And, and just like we've been able to, to achieve hand washings or sanitizers, face, face masks across the, the nation by sensitization and um, public campaigns, I believe that this, this also can be addressed by that same means. All right, Doctor, thank you very much for your time and the insights that you've given to the conversation this morning. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure.